Welcome to this episode of Appendages. I'm Brian with my co-host Rod. Say hi, Rod. Hi, Rod. So this month in December, first off, I'm calling out Tubi because our Christmas present sucks. <laughs> they gave us shit for horror movies this month, and I get it's Christmas. But they did not do a good job bringing horror to horror fans, and they actually haven't done a really good job if I look at what's coming in December and bringing Christmas stuff on to Tubi in December. And maybe there's a lot that's already there. Yeah, I didn't see much either. This month, we're going to do five movies from five different categories for Rod that he either recommends or has already seen and wants you to check out. So a suggestion or something he wants you to check out. And I'm going to do five horror adjacent or horror, I don't know, re- yeah, <laughs> something to do with horror films. Because, yeah, like I said, Tubi just did not, yeah, they did not stuff our stockings. <laughs> With stuff that horror fans would want to watch this month. And I mean, that's fine. It's it's not all about us. But on this podcast, it is all about us. That's right. It is. So I'll let Rod go first. He'll give you the movie and then I'll do mine and we'll go back and forth. I got five different categories, but mine are ones that I have seen, but it's been a very long time and I need to revisit them. From the thriller category, I've got Training Day from 2001, starring Denzel Washington and Ethan Hawke and Eva Mendez. Eva Mendez. I told him a couple of episodes ago, we're not going to talk about directors because he fucks up the name every time. And now he can't even t- say the actors and actresses names. Today is Detective Jake Hoyt's first day in narcotics. And he has to prove to the veteran detective Alonzo Harris that he can handle the seedier side of law enforcement. Oh, I've seen Train Today. It's been a little while, but it's it's a good film. Yeah, I, I remember when I bought that on DVD and with my roommates and we would watch that like every day. Oh, I don't think it's that good or that much. It's that good, but I don't think it's that much fun. Something has to be fun for me to want to watch it every day. My first film starts streaming on December 18th. It's a documentary. It's called Swept Left for or Swept Left or Death. I thought it said for death. I don't know. Uh, Discover the chilling stories of ordinary people who fell victim to the dangers of online dating apps and suffered deadly consequences. See, I'm like a kid on Christmas morning when I don't get what I want. I'm just distraught. I'm sad. (laughs) I just keep messing up. I think that documentary might be about me because I've been on dating sites twice and I didn't get very anywhere. I I lost two years on one relationship and (laughs) six months on another. The only thing dead in your life is your love life, though. These people actually died. Oh, okay, okay. I died inside. Does that count? Maybe. I don't know. So from the kids and family, I got Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs from 2009, voiced by Anna Ferris, Bill Hader, and Bruce the Chin Campbell. Who's Bruce Campbell played? The dad? I The mayor, I think it was. Oh, really? Well, that's interesting. I didn't know he was in it. So horror adjacent and science fiction. I really enjoy Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs. Are you going to give a synopsis? What could possibly go wrong when failed scientist Flint Lockwood invents a machine that turns water into food? Chaos and mayhem. That sounds like a hell of a machine. Can I get one? It might be. Yeah, why not? I'm hungry. So my next film uh, that starts streaming on December 6th, it's called Toxic Harmony. After parting from her girl group, a singer finds both fame and danger after capturing the attention of a powerful but mysterious record label executive named P. Diddy Combs. Oh, wait. (laughs) (laughs) I added that last part. Well, that sounds like that, though, don't it? Like comes with some uh, baby oil, too. Yeah, that sounds exactly like 
what happens in if you've ever heard the story of pink you know they want her to like change her whole persona and she's like no i'm not doing that so they wouldn't sign her so she had to kind of go on her own way what do you got next all right so next category is drama i got the departed from 2006 starring leonardo dicaprio jack nicholson and matt damon billy is an undercover cop for the boston police department he's on an assignment to take down the irish mafia but there's a mole in the police force and billy's life is on the line i have never seen that one like i said i it's been a while since i've seen these but it was a pretty good one i think it's a it's a scorsese film well my next film starts streaming on december 13th which is my sister's birthday and it's called if i go missing a true crime fanatic becomes obsessed with finding the neighborhood killer responsible for the disappearance of her best friend Ooh. Yeah, so if she goes missing, you better go look for her too. <laughs> so, Brian, if I go missing, you can have half my junk. Who gets the other half? I don't know. I haven't decided yet, but you can have half. So my fourth category is the comedy category, and I got the Cable Guy from 1996 starring Jim Carrey and Matthew Broderick. Steven has been kicked out of his girlfriend's place and has rented an apartment. When he decides to get Cable, he inadvertently gives the cable guy chip the idea that they are besties and when steven lets chip down all hell breaks loose as chip ruins steven's life see this is one of those that's horror adjacent kind of yeah yeah i mean that's kind of one of those that wouldn't maybe go on the i like it spooky horror podcast but it's one that's right there on the edge it's probably one of jim carrey's least known movies maybe i don't think many people talk about the cable guy anymore no, not really. I mean, he's done other stuff since that people talk about. would be more about what was the one where he drew numbers on his face? The number 23? Yeah, whatever that was. I don't hear a lot about that one. My uh, next film starts streaming on December 20th. It's called Adopted. A couple's hopes of adopting the perfect child unravel as their new son reveals a dark side, bringing terror into their lives. I feel like I've seen this one before. It just seems like a common story with adopted children and they're evil and they try to kill their adopted family. And we'll see what was the one that Reverend Films did a special features for recently? Well, Orphan, they did Orphan. And then uh, AOTKP got to do a. Yeah, that one's. There's also like uh, The Good Son. And, you know, there's a lot of the ones that I don't think that kid was adopted, maybe. I would imagine the Wendy's Foundation, the Dave Thomas Foundation for Adoption, you know, from Wendy's. Yeah. This is not a big backer of these films. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's probably why they sell the Dollar Frosty books in uh, October to, like, stop production of these films. <laughs> My final category is the action category. And I've got Man on Fire from 2004. I'm bringing back Denzel Washington. Got some Christopher Walken and a little bit of Dakota Fanning. Synopsis, ex-CIA agent Creasy takes on a job to be a bodyguard to a nine-year-old PETA. As the two get closer, Creasy starts a friendship with PETA. But one day at school, PETA is kidnapped and Creasy must try to find her to maintain his humanity. These are always weird to me because... I think to myself, I like Denzel and he's a good actor, but not as a bodyguard hitman. Because of his, he's not as buff as some of them? I guess. I mean, kind of like when they did Liam Neeson and Taken, I'm just like, he's not so believable. I mean, I would imagine I'm looking at it wrong because most people that are probably dangerous are just look like normal people. Just walking down the street and could snap your neck with the flick of the wrist. No, I always like this one. It has a little surprise ending when you, you find out at that, pretty close that, to the end. But Don't, don't ruin it. Don't, I, won't ruin it. I won't ruin it. But yeah, it's it's a good one. And I think it's one of Dakota Fanning's uh, first drama movies, I believe. Yeah, one of her early films that's not a kid movie or something. You know who else isn't kid friendly or in a kid movie? <laughs> Who's that, Brian? Our podcast network, the PFPN. Yeah, they might be kid friendly. I don't know. Jason drives a big white van. He's got candy, so oh, that's for us diabetics. <laughs> that ain't for the kids. It's because we're all fat and hungry. You're listening to the Prescribed Films Podcast Network 
home to hundreds of hours of free podcast entertainment. The shows on this network all have a common goal, providing you with the best discussions about movies and other forms of entertainment media. The PFPN hopes to fill your ear holes with audio joy. Visit our website with links to all the other amazing shows at www.thepfpn.com. Thanks for listening. So now that we've heard from our podcast network, it's time for my last movie. And it starts streaming on December 27th, so two days after Christmas. And it's called Tell Death Do Us Part. Because after you've spent the holidays with your family, you will wish for death. (laughs) A wedding planner must keep her best friend and her groom safe from a psychotic stranger who secretly threatens to murder the entire party. Wow. Sounds interesting. That's what happens when you get married during the holidays, you dummies. Right, yeah, that's dumb. So this month we're doing only one appendages because we have Indie Spotlight coming back early in the month and hopefully coming back every month after that. It's been kind of nice to have a break. Rod's not a part of any Spotlight. He may be at some time. He may come on as guest. Who knows? But we want to get some vendors and some other people that we want to highlight early enough in the month so you have time to reach out to them and order some Christmas gifts. Or maybe if you don't have time before Christmas... All that money your parents gave you, if you're still living in their basement, typing away on their computer, (laughs) doing podcasts, you can use that money to buy from the vendors, right? I live on a second floor apartment, by the way. Well, I wasn't talking about you. Oh, okay. Don't take it personal. Or you can buy me gifts, because I don't have anybody buy me gifts. Don't buy Rod anything. Uh-huh. You, don't, you don't need nothing. You got look at all them. You ain't even got room to hang anything up, Rod. And if you don't like any of the vendors we talk about, there's always inkmares.com. You can go buy you some I like it spooky horror podcast merch, right? Right. I mean, we have a sale going on right now. You got a bundle package. Two t shirts, a button, a sticker, a matchbook. What else? A magnet. All for fifty dollars delivered. That's a hell of a deal, Oof. especially with inflation and in today's economy. That's right. So check out these movies on Tubi. And I mean, if Tubi doesn't up their game, we might have to go somewhere else to get some horror stuff. But I would imagine after December, it'll get better. You can't be great all the time, right? Yeah. Oh, well, I can. We'll see you after the holidays. Bye. That marks the end of our broadcast day here at The Wrong Podcast Died. Our transmission is powered by a frequency of 800 watts. We will resume our usual programming in two weeks. Until then, we bid you good night.